I'm Al Bacon and I would like to welcome you to my Let's Fix It Right channel for easy and straightforward solutions for your home improvement, maintenance and repair needs and projects. And this is my faithful assistant Cody who will help us get this project right with his dogged determination and helpful project tips. In this video, Cody and I show you how to easily and accurately measure and cut stair skirts. As you most likely know, well-designed and installed stair skirts provide a great finished look and amplify the beauty of your stair tread installation against your stairwell walls. Measuring and capturing your stair skirt dimensions is by far the most important step of adding new stair skirts to your stairwell. Capturing and transferring your stair skirt measurements can be very complex and prone to inaccurate measurements, lumber waste, and frustrating rebuilds. Consequently, this episode shows you how to get it right the first time with perfect dimensions and measurement transfers to your skirt board so you don't waste money buying more lumber and redoing the skirts. Episode 58 shows you how to easily install these skirts. This was my original roughed in builder grade stairwell leading into my basement without stair skirts. As you come down to here to a landing and make a 180 degree turn, there's another short set of stairs into the basement. This is a short video featuring my completed stair skirts as step one of our objective stairwell upgrade we're going to achieve. These are the upper stair skirts and the lower stair skirts. Stair skirts also enable you to achieve near perfect stair tread insulation so caulk which collects dirt and grime is not needed between the stair treads and the wall. Stair skirts also protect the stairwell walls adjacent to the walking areas on the stair treads against shoe marks and damage. Prior to getting started with measuring your stair skirts, you may or may not have to replace your builder grade stair treads and risers like I did. In my case, I plan to install laminate cap tread stair coverings. My old Builder grade stair treads were too thick for these cap tread coverings, so I replaced them all as shown here. When I did this, I installed my new treads and risers with approximately 1 8 of an inch spaces on both sides to make room for my paper templates behind the stairs. Using my 1x10 stair skirt MDF board, I traced out three blank patterns from a roll of painter's paper that I bought from Home Depot. I anticipated that each skirt would be slightly different, so I was prepared to mark and cut out three different patterns for the three stairwell walls. And I later developed the pattern for this fourth, smaller knee wall. This is my first stair skirt template taped into place. I added these squares to cover these bare areas because I could not get the paper template all the way down into the structure. The stair frame stopped me from positioning or pushing the paper flush with the corners of the stair treads and risers. So I taped these inserts or patches in place. To capture the top of the stair skirt, I used this straight 1x4 MDF board and penciled in its edge here. Next, I cut out the pattern with scissors and traced its outline out on the MDF board that I'm going to use for the first stair skirt. As you can see, it will be easy to cut and follow this outline with my table saw and saber saw. Using my auger bits, I've determined the closest diameter is 1 and 1 of an inch to match the front circular portion of each stair tread. To ascertain the center of each circular arc, I used my high school drafting circle template from my mechanical drawing course. And I did this with all the arcs we're going to drill out. So at this time I'm ready to drill out each one of these arcs. With the centers identified, let's drill out each arc.
This is my last hole. Brush some of this away so you can see it. At this time, let's move this up to my table saw in the garage. Okay, so I'm out in my garage with my table saw set up and I'm gonna go ahead and make these cuts at this time. This concludes my table saw work. I'll take this downstairs and finish it up with my Dremel saw max and saber saw. Okay, so I'm going to clean up a lot more of this with my Dremel saw max, which cuts right through this MBF board with no problem. And it cuts very accurately, so that's why I'm going to go with it. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my final cuts here, saber saw. Okay, so that finishes my, my final cut and then on the cleanup. Now for my moment of reckoning, let's see how well this fits. As you can see, it slides in perfectly. It's, it's right on. Couldn't be much better. Just out of curiosity, just check this on the opposite side. It, as you saw, it was very time consuming making that, that paper uh, template out of here. Placing it on the opposite side. We're in pretty good shape. You could probably use that. I think there's a few areas that I'll make some adjustments on. Like here, here I'll add some additional, I'll add some paper or to, to this and then use this to make a template for the opposite side. Fill in this gap a little bit as well as extend this uh, up in here and, and bring this up. This is not quite high enough for this area here. So. Otherwise, on the left side, it'll, it'll serve as a, as a decent template and to expedite completion of the project. In addition, if your stair treads and risers on the left and right sides have almost identical measurements, you may be able to use the back side of your right template as a starting point for your left template. Uh, lastly, I didn't mention this. On the bottom here, I have allowed for the, the thickness of the underlayment that I'm going to place on on the on the landing here as well as the thickness of the, the laminate floor itself okay as you can see i have purposely provided some small gaps for clearance which are approximately one eighth of an inch or so with my follow-on kappa tread stair covering installed you will not be able to see these gaps at all also the laminate risers will cover the vertical gaps 
At this time, I merely have to finish my taping and mudding of the drywall and repaint the stairwell to be ready to install these new stair skirts. As you can see, it's been a hard day's work for Cody. This concludes this episode where Cody and I showed you how to easily and accurately measure and cut stair skirts. Episode 58 shows how to install these stair skirts. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and select the YouTube bell so YouTube will notify you of all my new projects immediately after I publish them. At this time, Cody and I are moving on to our next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.